So the final section, we've talked about message spreading and spreading and despreading, is the actual detection. So once we receive our signal in reality, we need to have or oh, there are three different types of detectors. They're all known as the matched filter family, being those being from the simplest to the more complex and they're they're then more complicated. It depends on the application as to what accuracy we re required and what the channel conditions are. So the simplest case is the matched filter, then the matched filter decorrelator, and finally the match filter minimum mean squared error. We will talk about what each of those are. Again, you will do this in your laboratory session. So these are is the this is the history of uh, multi-user detection. So in 1986, so not that long ago, um, S. Verdu defined that the capacity C is achievable with a receiver that has exponential complexity. In 1990, the capacity is nearly achiev achievable with linear complexity. So we want to have a, an, a less complex receiver so when we want to achieve the, the, the channel capacity. In 1994 and 5, the adaptive minimum mean squared error CDMA receivers um, were defined. They're, they're linear complexity re receivers and they are adaptable to realistic cellular mobile environment such as fading environment, narrowband interference, uh, multiple access interference and also unknown signatures. So you'd be able to find these research papers. They may be useful for your assignments. Assignment. So the classification we have max matched filters. We have maximum likelihood because obviously when we when we're receiving a sequence, we don't know what was transmitted. So we go by what was most likely transmitted. Um, what's the bit error rate? We've got maximum likelihood zero forcing, minimum mean squared error, and we're going to explain what the decorrelator is, the zero forcing, and the minimum mean squared error, which is given by R plus sigma squared identity, identity matrix to the minus one. Then we've got zero forcing, minimum mean squared error, differential feedback equalizer, and the um, MFML, we're, we're just going to look at the top three. Um, there are more complex receivers, which are, which are known as adaptive receivers, so they change according to the channel conditions. However, that is a more complex course and could be studied at master's level. So, the three multi-user classifications that we have. First of all we'll look at the simplest which is the matched filter. So in the match filter what we have is we have a bank of match filters at the receiver side and we detect which was it a one or was it a zero or was it a one or was it a zero a minus one that was transmitted to so one or a zero here. So a single match filter, single user, so our Y consists of signature matrix or our code 1 times our bit 1 plus our noise. We're saying that our expected va value of our noise is sigma squared. So the output at the max match filter is the we won't worry about this hermitian, it's it's a mathematical term, but what we're saying is we can do this in MATLAB. We multiply the signature 1, hermitian, by y, and signature 1, hermitian, times signature 1, times x, gives us our value of approximate value of x. R1 is 
as we've said, signature one her mission times signature one is equal to one. This is a this is a mathematical um, function since the at the magnitude of our spreading code squared equals one. Okay, and it's the normalized power. So R1 should equal 1. So here, X1 at the match filter should equal the original X1 plus our noise. So at the output, we have X1 plus some noise. And that's the decision of the match filter. So as long as the signal-to-noise ratio is low enough, sorry, the noise power is low enough, or signal to noise ratio is high, high enough, then we're going to get the correct decision. However, if the noise is high and the signal to noise ratio is low, then the match filter could give the wrong decision. So then we use a little bit more um, mathematics to try and make a better decision or to improve the bit error rate. So, oh, in this case, we're using two matched filters. So the output is the signature Y is signature one, user one, plus signature two, user two, plus N. So now we have the same code one, basically, times our Y. So we've got signature one H times S1, which is essentially one. Signature 1 H times signature 2 times X, which is what we showed before in previous slides. This is the multiple access interference. And signature 1 H, our code, times our noise, which is essentially our received noise. And our received noise is, is the same as sigma squared. So we have X1 now. There is the, the output or the match filter response from output x1 hat is x1 plus the multiple access interference from the second user and any subsequent users so that could be k users plus the noise similarly at x2 match filter at the second match filter we have the output of x2 plus the multiple access interference 2 which is essentially the multiple access interference from user 1 in this case plus noise 2. So now C, the capacity is log 2 of 1 plus the power divided by the multiple access interference. So now we extend it to have multiple users. So the users goes go from k equals 1 to large k. So the output is the summation of user 1 to k times their own code, so SK, XK, plus N. So the, out, the match filter output is S Hermitian Y, or S Hermitian SX plus S Hermitian N equals received times X plus N. So received is S1H1, times S1, S1H2 times S2, all the way from S1H to S1, SK. And then on the downward slope, we, this is always, this is always at, oops, excuse me a second. This is always S1. And then we have S1 Hermitian, S2 Hermitian, SK Hermitian. So these Rows are the output for user 1 to user k. So that would be x1 match filter to xk match filter. Now this matrix, we've shown that S1H... Well, I've told you that S1H times S1 is 1 and S2H times S2 because we're multiplying by the same signature that's also 1 
and SKH times SK, that will also be 1. So all on this diagonal we have 1s. Now if we have a truly orthogonal matrix, um, sort of signatures, sorry, codes for each user, then this would be the identity matrix. If we have semi-orthogonal codes, then, sorry, this would just be 1s for the identity matrix and the alphas would all be 0. However, if we're using semi-orthogonal codes or gold codes, then alpha is a very, very small number. So, x hat match filter is approximately equal to x plus 1. If these alphas are higher, then we get a poorer output. But we can also improve on that. So the MATLAB implementation of the match filter, again, you will go through this in the lab, is the x match filter is the sign of the signature matrix times y, the received vector or matrix. And I have then um, demodulated it. So we're just saying sign. So if it's positive, make it positive. If it's negative, it's negative. So I've already done the multiplication. Um, and then what I've done is X is our input data and our X demo matched filter, so demodulated matched filter, is 0.5, um, sorry. In this case, we have ones and minus ones. So if our match filter was a one, if we add 0.5 to it, it's one and a half. So if we times it by 0 0.5, it's a half, and we add 0 0.5, it's a 1. Then if we the output was a minus 1, if so then sorry, 1 times a half is a half plus 0 0.5 gives a 1. If the output was a minus 1, it would be a minus 1 times a half, which is minus a half plus 0 0.5, it would be a 0. So basically, we're converting to ones and zeros. The reason that I'm doing that is because we to compare how many errors there are. If we exclusively or the demodulated match filter output with the input data x, then if the two are different, then we'll get a one. If they're the same, we'll get a zero. So the sum of the exclusive OR of those two uh, matrices will give the number of errors. So I've stored that under error, and then I've added that error to the final error, because this is part of a loop, depending on how many times we're going around that loop. So that's the MATLAB implementation of the match filter.